morning, the RCC Bank family. Happy New Year. We've made it into 2021. What a blessing that is. Amen. Amen. So the book of Deuteronomy uh, talks about several blessings and graces that God has afforded us. He makes us the head and not the tail. He opens heaven's storehouses and pours out abundant riches upon us. He causes our enemies to fall when they rise against us. We are blessed. So let's be reminded of that this morning. No matter how bleak or impossible or desperate the situation looks, we are blessed. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. When we're going out, when we're coming in, that means you're covered by a gracious and heavenly Father. Blessed in the city. 
Amen. Blessed when I come in and I go in. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a good God this morning. He's allowed us to come out of 2020 into 2021. And that's enough to give God some praise. Give God some praise. Take it for granted that we're here today. Ah, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we bless you. And we just appreciate your grace and your love today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I'm here to bring you scripture and prayer. So if you come with me to the books of book of Acts as I bring you the word of God, in the name of Jesus. The book of Acts, chapter 1. Verses 6 through 14. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a good God. Amen. Yes, yes. We serve a good God. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6 starts and says, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. And when he has said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And when they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, were coming the same way as you saw him going into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olive, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these, with one accord, were devoted, they devoted themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of God for the people of God. Prepare your hearts and your minds for a time of prayer. We come to the Lord God this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. We will bless his name at all times, and his praise shall continually be in our mouths. We glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords this morning. We realize there's so much going on in the earth, but we serve an awesome God. We serve a great big God. We serve a God who has all power and has all authority in heaven and earth, underneath the earth. I don't care where you go. He's still in control. Yeah. Hallelujah. We want to, first of all, just say thank the Lord God Almighty, even in our pastor's absence. We want to keep our pastor lifted up before the Lord as he's traveling. We want to keep the entire family lifted up, the Gibson family. We want to continue to pray for their strength, their peace, and their protection. We pray, oh God, for the sick and the afflicted, oh God. We pray for those who are having lingering side effects due to COVID-19 and so many other sicknesses and diseases that are in the earth. We want to take the time to lift up those that have bereavements in their families. Lord God, things are heavy right about now. But you are the lifter of the bow down here today in the name of Jesus. We take the time to lift up, as I said, at the Gibson family. We want to lift up Nancy White. We want to continue to lift up the Mitchell family. We want to lift up the Bell family and their loss. 
We want to lift up the Prune family as they go through, oh Lord. Yes, we want to lift up the Lockhart family. Yes, John Makeham Jr., Lord God. Minister Mary Murphy. This is Reap the Childs. We want to lift up Minister Diane Kennedy. We want to lift up Mrs. Latoya Merkel. We want to lift up the Crusoe family. We want to lift up Miss Melinda Howard today in the name of Jesus. We want to lift up Miss Geraldine Pickett in the name of Jesus. We want to lift up the Billingsley family. Yes. We want to lift up the Eight Wells family. And so many others that are going through in their minds, their bodies, their souls, and emotions. We extend ourselves this morning to our global BRCC family all over, Lord God. Yes. And we thank you, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. That your word says, oh God, hallelujah. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? He is the strength of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? We will be of good courage today. And he will strengthen our hearts. All who hope in the Lord. Keep your hope and your expectation in the Lord God Almighty. We thank the Lord God that he sent his word out to heal us and deliver us from all of our destructions. Father God, we just thank you right now that your word is true and shall not return to your void. Yes. We thank you for the names we called out, oh God, and those that we did not call out. Those spoken and unspoken requests, oh God, we send your word forth, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you that your word says, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen us, oh God, according to your word. Your word also says, but they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God, we call you on your word today. We send forth your love today. We send forth your peace today. We send forth your healing today. We send forth your protection today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come on in and have thine own way. In the name of Jesus. In the life of your people, oh God. In the church house today, oh God, in the name of Jesus, rest upon us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus we pray, and I say, oh God, bless the woman of God that will bring the word forth today, in the name of Jesus, crown her word fresh, oh God, from the crown of the head to the soul of her feet, oh God, pour out of her like only you can do, and we'll be careful to tell you, thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoint my head with oil i am not alone uh, so it's been an honor to worship with you live brcc and even as i head back to michigan um, for my second semester of dental school i am not alone even as Pastor Gibson is overseas going to Liberia to check on the ministry's work, he is not alone. Um, even in the middle of the week when you're absent from this body meeting, you are not alone. And so the Lord is our shepherd. We are not alone.
until today. Amen. And so we are very Amen. grateful and thankful for this opportunity to stand before you and um, give you a word from God. And so for our Global Faith family and for those of you that follow us every Sunday and um, on Wednesdays for our Wednesday Night Recharge, we are entering into a new um, study on Sundays entitled Be Ready. Um, we say BRCC. Be ready for the coming of Christ. That's right. Be ready for the coming of Christ. And so on Sundays, we are doing a series entitled Be Ready. And then on Wednesday night, our Wednesday night recharge series, we are going through the book of Proverbs. And our series um, is entitled Be, Rock, Be Wise. And so for 2021, we want you to be ready, but we also want you to be wise. And so we're going to look at that um, over a few Sundays, over about five or six Sundays, be ready and be wise. So the Be Ready series, though, um, it focuses on three. We have three key aspects of the Be Ready series. Mm -hmm. And the Be Ready sermon series will focus on reminding Christians and others that we need to be ready for the second coming of Christ. It also focuses on equipping believers with the skills that you guys need to witness to others. And then finally, um, it it focuses or we want to focus on sharing God's plan of salvation with anyone that may have um, turned away or maybe they don't know Christ. So we want to equip you guys with the tools that you need to share God's plan of salvation boldly and share God's plan of salvation with humility, humility, but also share God's plan of salvation with compassion. And so as believers and as disciples, we want you to be able to maximize your full potential throughout these two series. 
So this week, we'll take a look at the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. We're actually going to start in Acts, the first chapter. We're going to start around the sixth verse and read through the 14th verse. Um, so if you will, grab your Bibles for me, grab your laptops, your tablets, your phone, however it is you get the word of God today. Um, I'm going to actually be reading from the New Living Translation. And so I'm going to start at Acts, the first chapter, verse 6 through 14. Sister Karen, Sister Karen read it earlier, but we're going to read um, starting now. So when the disciples were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? So as way of a background, where we are in Acts is we pick up um, after the crucifixion, after he has been buried, he's been crucified, but then he arose again. And for 40 days, we're told that Christ walked the earth and he spent time with the disciples. As a matter of fact, when they first saw him, they thought he was a ghost. And he said, no, I'm not a ghost. Give me something to eat and I'll prove it to you guys. And so he ate with them and it became a custom for 40 days for Christ to break bread with the disciples and teach the disciples. And throughout this 40 days, they continually asked him time and time again, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Because up until this point, even though the disciples saw what he had been through, even though they had felt the place where the nails went through, they were still focused on an earthly kingdom and not a heavenly kingdom. And so they were still focused on the fact that, God, is it time for you to put Israel back in her rightful place? Is it time for you to restore Israel so that we can become the great nation that we once were? And Christ continually said over and over again, he said, no. The Father alone in heaven has the authority to set those dates and times. They are not given to you. And in essence, if I can paraphrase for you um, just for a little bit, in essence, what Christ said, you know, I can't give you that. But what I can give you is this. Uh -huh. He said, what I can give you is the power uh -huh. from the Holy Spirit that will come upon you. And when that power comes upon you, you will be my witnesses not just in Jerusalem and not just throughout all Judea, not just in Samaria, but throughout the entire world. Yeah. And so he was essentially saying, you guys are worried about an earthly kingdom. I can't tell you that because that's not my authority or only the father in heaven has the authority to handle those earthly things. But what I can do for you is I can make you a difference maker, not just in your hometown, but throughout right, the right, entire right. world. And so for those of you that are connected to BRCC, we are a global faith family. Yeah, yeah. And God wants to continue to use you. See, the, when Christ was talking, he was talking to the apostles. He was talking to the believers. He wants to continue to use you, not just to make a change where you are, Mm -hmm. but make a change throughout the entire world. Amen. But Christ gave them a little bit um, of a little bit of a caution, though. He said, you know, one thing that I want you to do, though, is you've got to wait for this promise that the father has given you. Mm -hmm. And so when we figure out, when we look at the promise, we look at, well, let's look at that word wait first. That word wait means you've got to remain in a state in which there's an expectation or a hope. So when you're waiting, you're hoping for something to come to pass. When you're waiting, you're expecting something to come. When you're waiting, you're not sitting there idly just twiddling your thumbs. So see, sometimes we confuse wait with idleness and they're not the same thing. Sometimes we can figure we confuse weight with being stagnant or being stale, and it's not the same thing. When you go to a body of water, if the water gets stagnant, if the water gets stale, then bacteria begins to grow on the water and it chokes the life out of anything that's living in that water. See, you can't you cannot uh, you cannot afford to get stagnant or stale, or you can't afford to be idle. Even though you're waiting. Amen. 
Amen. There was a song um, by Vicki Yohu that was entitled In the Waiting, and she talked about pain, a gift that nobody wants to receive, right. but it leaves you stronger once it's gone. Yeah. And so waiting is not a very comfortable place for us to be in. And I have to ask you this question because I would be remiss if I did it. What are you doing while you're waiting? My God. See, sometimes we want to just sit back and wait and kick our feet up and say, okay, God, whenever you move, I'll be ready. But are you preparing yourself for the move of God? Amen. Are you preparing yourself to receive the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father? And if you are not 100% sure what that promise is, turn with me to Joel, the second chapter, the 28th through the 29th verse. That's Joel, the second chapter, the 28th through the 29th verses. And it reads as follows. Then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Mm -hmm. Your sons, just your sons, yeah. your sons and daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he didn't say just the men folk. He said, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. So that takes out all the excuses. You can't have the excuse that he won't pour out his spirit on me. Because God said, in those days, I will pour out my spirit I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. Mm -hmm. And so are you waiting for the promise of the Father? Mm -hmm. And I want to just do a word of caution, and that word of caution is, and this is really the bulk of my sermon right here, is don't get ahead of God. Amen. Amen. See, it would have, the disciples could have went to the upper room, and they could have went out on their own. And they could have started doing things on their own. But Christ said, you got to wait. You got to wait on this promise that I'm sending you. And you cannot afford to get ahead of God at this particular point in time, at this particular junction. I know it's 2021. I know we want to celebrate coming out of 2020. I know we want to wash our hands with 2020. And we want to go on and get out the way. But we cannot afford to get ahead of God. And so while we are waiting on God, there are three things that we've got to be sure that we do. First of all, we've got to pray. He said that when you go ahead and read the rest of Acts, it says the disciples went and they were there on one accord and they were continually praying. It gives the list and then it says, and the women were praying with them. And so you had a body of believers that came together to pray. But when we look at 1 Thessalonians, prayer wasn't the only thing that's required. As a matter of fact, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. And when we look at the ninth chapter, it says, For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you were doing. And if we skip over to verse 16, it reads, be always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. But test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. So while you're waiting, the first thing you've got to do is pray. The next thing you've got to do is praise. See, we, we, we understand the importance of prayer for the most part, but we cannot underestimate the importance of praise. See, when our praises go up, the angels in heaven start rejoicing. And when the angels in heaven start rejoicing, I can see them going to Christ saying, did you hear that? Did you hear that? They calling on your name. They lifting you up down there. And they start, they start interceding on our behalf. And Christ starts interceding on our behalf. And he says, Father, did you hear? Father, did you hear? Father, did you hear? Father, did you hear? You got to move some things. She's calling on you. And so in addition to prayer, we've got to be prayer. We've got to lift up praise amen, also. Amen, amen. And then the third thing that we've got to do, we've got to petition. And we've got to preach. 
and we've got to petition, and we've got to preach. See, you can't really preach without petitioning the Father, and you can't really petition the Father unless you begin to have some sort of preach built up in you, because eventually he will answer. And when he answers, you've got to tell somebody. And when you tell somebody, you're preaching to them. See, preaching ain't just somebody standing up here doing what I'm doing right now. Whenever you tell somebody about the glory of God, then you are preaching to them. And so remember, I want you guys to remember, if you don't remember anything else, don't get ahead of God during the season. But in your waiting, don't become stale. Remember to pray. Remember to praise. Remember to petition him. Ask him for what you want. And then when you receive that thing, go out and tell somebody else. And you know, there is, I want you to understand there is power, but there is also purpose in your walk. See, sometimes we look at things and we don't understand the power that we have within us. Because we look at, we read the Bible and we read it as things that happened a long time ago. And we don't necessarily apply that to our particular lives. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power from on high. That's what Christ said in his word. And he didn't leave it right there. It is for us to apply to our lives today. And so as I close, I want to remind you guys, there was, um, <laughs> my, we had the privilege of attending a wedding um, this weekend. And so as I, was, as I was studying and as I was looking and I was like, okay, God, what am I supposed to sh- tell your people? I think God used this wedding to, um, for me to be able to articulate a little bit better what I've not been able to do so far. So for me, one of the most and one of the joys I get from wedding isn't when the bride walks down. For me, it's looking at the groom's face as he sees the bride dressed up. And I don't know why, but just like whenever you see a groom and he sees his bride for the first time with the veil and the beautiful dress on and she's standing there, to me, his face just lights up. And I love seeing that. So while all the other eyes are are focused on the bride, I'm looking at the groom. Because I want to see that. I want to see that joy that he gets from seeing his bride all dressed up without spot or wrinkle. So this particular um, wedding, though, the bride, the, um, the lady over the ceremony announced that the bride was about to come in. And she did it twice. And I thought, well, okay. And so they start, they cue the music up. They start playing the music. But before the bride comes in, the groom turns his back. My God. And I was like, well, dang, I didn't get to see him, you know, with the smile on his face. (laughs) And so she's standing there and she's waiting at the altar, um, at um, at the entrance to the aisle. So she's standing there. And the entire time, the groom has his back to her. And you see all of these other people, they'll just, oh, she's so beautiful. And oh, my God, she's so wonderful. And, you know, and they're they're overjoyed. But the groom still has his back to her. And he didn't turn around and look at her. It was almost as if he didn't even acknowledge her. But the thing that I could see from the angle that I was at was that he was giddy. He he did a little two-step. His fingers were doing like this. You know, he was just a little giddy in his, you know, standing there. Mm-hmm. But all the bride saw was the back of her. I hear you. I hear you. All the bride saw was that he was turned away from her. Mm-hmm. All the bride saw was that her groom had turned his back to her. Some of us think God has turned his back on you. Some of you think God doesn't care about you. Some of you don't understand that he's waiting there in anticipation, waiting for you to come down the aisle. And so some of you are waiting at the entrance, scared to take another step, because all you can see is that which is 
in front of you, which looks like the back side of you. But he's there. And he's waiting. And the angels in the heavenly see that great anticipation. The angels in the heavenly see that he's giddy for his bride. But you've got to trust him enough to walk down the aisle. You've got to trust him enough to understand his great love for you. You've got to trust him enough to take one step and then another step and then another step. Even though it appears that he has his back turned to you. See, you've got to trust him enough that your heavenly Father, you've got to trust him enough to know that despite what it looks like, your heavenly father loves you. And I want to tell you this, when, when the bride came out, the song that they were playing was forever is a long time. But that's how much I love you. And that spoke to my heart because even though he had his back turned to her, she was standing there. The heavenlies were saying forever is a long time. That's how much I love you. And that is what God is saying to you. Forever is a long time. That's how much he'll love you. Even though it looks like his back is turned, don't doubt his love for you. He loves you with an everlasting love regardless of what it looks like. So when you're waiting, when you're standing there at the entrance and you're not sure if he still loves you or not, when you're doubting everything, when you're when you're looking at stuff and you're like, Lord, I don't know if I can take another step. Just remember that the angels are there and they're cheering you on and they're saying, come on. They're saying you can do it. They're saying take another step. They're saying don't give up. They're saying keep moving. Don't wait. Don't get stale in your waiting. Whenever you pray, you take another step. Whenever you praise, you take another step. Whenever you petition him, you take another step. Whenever you lift him up, you take another step. Whenever you pray, you take another step. Come on, God's people. Don't get ahead of him because of what it looks like. Yes, yes. Yes. Keep moving towards him in prayer. Keep moving towards yes. him in praise. Keep moving towards your heavenly father because he loves you. Even though it looks like his back is turned, he loves you with an everlasting love. That's how, if you want to know how much he loves you, he sent his son, Christ Jesus, to die for you. He didn't send his son to condemn no Brother Cyrus. Brother Cyrus preached a message one time, and you know, we talk about the fact that he came, but it says he came not to condemn the world, yeah, yeah. but that through him the world may be saved. See, a lot of times we focus on the condemnation. That's why when you see his back turned to you, you're confused. That's not why he came. He came that through him you may be saved. So if you don't know our Lord and Savior today, if you are unsure whether or not his back is turned in anger or love, I invite you. I want to introduce you to my groom. I want to introduce you to my husband. I want to introduce you to the man that even though it looks like his back is turned, I know he's waiting in anticipation for me to get there. I want to introduce you to that man that's sitting there giddy up saying, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. If you don't know him, then take a few minutes to reach out. If you don't know him, then settle it in your heart. As a matter of fact, if you've turned away from him, Take a few minutes to repent and return to him. If you feel like you've gotten ahead of God, then take a few minutes and settle the account. And as I pray this prayer with you, I want you to repeat it with me, believing that our Heavenly Father hears you. Most gracious and Heavenly Father, Lord God, forgive us for all of the many ways that we've fallen short of God. Father, forgive us for getting ahead of you. Father, forgive us for stepping out of turn. Forgive us for words that don't edify, for thoughts that may condemn, oh God. Father, we repent of all of our sins, and we trust you on today as our Lord and Savior. We bless you and we honor you. Our faith family, if you've made that prayer with us, send us a note over Facebook, send us a text and email, 
let us know so that we can begin to pray with you. Because what happens is you make a declaration of faith mm -hmm. and the enemy comes in because he wants to regain his territory. Mm -hmm. But as a child of Christ, the blood of Jesus washes over you. And so when Christ, when, the, when our father looks at you, he no longer sees the sin. He sees the blood of his son. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And so remember that, that the blood of Christ is there and it's covering you. Sister Lee, um, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that is so important on today. Because we're going to take communion in just a second for our um, faith family. Most of you already have your bread and your, your communion elements. If you don't, take a second to grab your communion elements. Sometimes we want to take for granted that precious blood, that blood that washes away. And we don't understand the power within communion. Paul said when you take, you've got to make sure that you are taking worthily, that you are not drinking and you're not eating condemnation onto you. And so before you take communion, we're going to say a quick prayer so that this that we partake of will be healing to our bodies. and so on the night that Christ was betrayed he took the bread and he broke it and as he broke it he told them that this bread is representative of his body that was broken for them and so as you get your bread together, I want you to hold it up before the Father. And I want you to say, most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we lift up your body that was broken for me. Father, if there is any unclean thing within me, remove it out of your way so that I may eat of this bread worthily, oh God, and that it will bring healing to my body. And so I ask that you would eat at this time. manner he poured out of the fruit of the vine the blood that was shed for you and I his body was broken his blood was shed and he said as many times as you do this we're told later on that as many times as we do this we do this in remembrance of him and so I ask that right now you would drink God, we honor you and we bless you. Be with your people, oh God. Bless them in their going in and their coming out. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. And now um, it's time for our announcements and our final blessings. Amen. To God be the glory. We should say thank you to the Lord for uh, Minister Stone, who has delivered an awesome word. It's something that we can, um, a sure foundation in which we can start this year off. Um, our announcements this morning is we are grateful that you are partners with us in purpose as we worship and as we minister unto, uh, to the global community.
Mm -hmm. um, as, and as such, we ask that if you would um, contribute to the ministry. The Bible says that as long as the earth endures, that there will be seed time and harvest time. And so we invite you uh, to sow seed into the ministry and understand that your seed is being sown into good ground. And our prayer for you is that God will return it back to you a hundredfold. Um, and you can give uh, by going to our uh, by cash app uh, is Brewster Road CC, or you can give online at www.brccbham.org, or you can mail your contributions, your donations, your seed to BRCC at 1661 Brewster Road, Birmingham, Alabama, 35235. So we invite you to do that and understand that we are really working in the community. We are serving God's people, not only here in our community, but all over the nation and even outside of the country. If there's anyone who is celebrating your birthday or your anniversary in January, we say hallelujah and we celebrate and we honor uh, what God is doing in your life. And we thank you uh, for uh, sharing this time with us. Um, along with our prayer requests that have already been noted, um, I would like to, uh, in addition, add the Chambers family to that prayer list. Um, they are in bereavement uh, at this time. And also what God has shared with me on my way in is that we really need to um, continue to be in prayer for the prayers, for the intercessors. Mm -hmm. We carry as intercessors, as those who stand in the gap for others, we carry a heavy load. And sometimes that can take a toll on our bodies mentally, physically, and emotionally. So God wants us to make sure that we're praying for the intercessors. And also we want to remind you to pray for this nation, pray for our first responders, pray for our teachers, pray for our healthcare workers. And we invite you to our, our Wednesday recharge at seven o'clock. You can go to our webpage and we invite you. It is on Zoom, it's interactive. Uh, you have an opportunity to ask questions, to, to uh, give information and to receive information. So we ask that you would just Come along with us as we grow in the favor and the admonition of our Lord. Um, we believe in shameless praise. We believe in prayers that heal. And most of all, we believe in what the Bible teaches. So we thank you for worshiping with us today. And we ask and we invite you now to receive the final blessings of the Lord. Wherever you are, this is what. I want God wants to remind us of now as you would say now unto him who is able to keep you from falling regardless of what 2020 will bring God is able to keep you from falling BRCC, be ready for the coming of Christ. And he's able to present you faultless. Nobody how since then we are, the blood of Jesus covers us and he's able to present us faultless before his presence. And he will do it with exceeding joy. He is the only wise God. And forevermore we give him honor, glory. He has dominion and power both now and forevermore. And the kingdom of God 